When you are close to God, nothing will be possible to you. Sickness have no right over you. Marital problems have no right over you. But one thing you have to note is that always you must remember that someone died for you. You need a spiritual covering no matter what you are. Humble yourself to tap into the grace. Jesus did not consider himself equal with God. But he humbled himself to be a servant. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to talk about the power in his name. Philippians 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Somebody say the mind. Somebody say mind. Do not be conformed to the partner of this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let this mind be in you. What? Let this mind be in you. Somebody which... say, let this mind be in you. Uh -huh. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, the mind of Christ. Somebody say, the mind of Christ. Do not be conformed to the partner of this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Continue. Who being in the form of God. Who being in the form of God, equal with God. Uh -huh. Did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Uh -huh. But made himself of no reputation. Made himself with no reputation. Taking the form of a bound servant. And Taking the form of a bound servant. A servant. A servant. A servant. The mind of a servant. Sister, you have to have the mind of Christ. And the mind of the Christ is that he did not consider himself with equality with God. No pride. No arrogant. He humbled himself and took a servant wood. Do you want to be great? Serve. Let me tell you the secret of my anointing. I was an usher. I did ushering for six good years. My senior prophet did not prophesy to me in any other day. But I was ushering. I cleaned the church. I lift up the tables in the church. I wash the bathrooms of the church. I sweep the church. I make sure that the TV is set. The chairs are well arranged. I did all that I did. Yet, my pastor did not pray for me. He did not lay his hands on me. Yet, I was serving. Until one day, a prophet from the northern region of our town where I come from, came to preach for my pastor. And he did not call me publicly to prophesy to me. But I was seven. People fall under the power, I will hold them. You see, I'm a big man, you know that. Before I was so more macho and strong, I do physique works. I lift women, they fall, I lift them up rush and do everything. Protocol. Go to the pastor's hotel. I own their clothing. I serve. I wash pastor car. He never anointed me or prophesied to me. But yet, I was serving. I did not open my mouth and say, man of God, give me money. Because I know money will finish. Don't be like Gehazia. Who followed the prophet Elisha? Because of money. Some of you, you are serving because of money. That is not servant. Some of you, you are serving in a bank. You are serving in a company. Serve well.
do whatever God has called you to do well. Out of a good service, servanthood, the Lord will elevate you. I was usher. I was just an ordinary usher. And the funny thing is that, you see, when you are usher, you can't dress well. You put on a nice suit. My pastor will stand in the pulpit, right? And then he say, oil, 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 oil. And then the people will come with an oil. And they will give the oil to me. Why is I'm holding the oil like this? Following my prophet everywhere you move. He touch people, I'm holding the oil. Then he called a woman and say, Woman that says the Lord, this and that. And while he was speaking to the woman, he put his hands in the oil and he would tap my shoulder like this. By the time I finish service, my head to my toe, all my dress is oil. So if I wear a suit, it's going to be oil. So all my suit was things with oil. Huh. But something was being poured on me spiritually. Don't be like Gehazia. He said that when you went there and followed Naaman, my spirit was with you. You went for money. You go behind your pastor talking to other people. Blackmailing your own pastor because of money. I see some of you, you do that in this church. Soon and very soon, the spirit of the law will expose you. You gossiping. Stop. That is not a good servant to Serve well. Do the work of God well. Jesus became a servant. Guess what? One day, a prophet came to my church and he was preaching. After the preaching, he sat down and I went to him with a bowl of water to wash his hands. So when I kneeled down, and I begins to pour the water for him to wash his hands. The water spit on his shoe, like your shoe, nice shoe. And then immediately, I took my suit like this. And started to wipe it off. Then he said, son, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. The third time, he started speaking in tongues. Whilst I was kneeling down. His hands was on my head. And he started prophesying. Prince, you will be a prophet to many nations. You will travel to abroad. Your ministry is going to be great. You will do mighty things. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. I was kneeling down in front of him. Wiping his shoe. Because I have spit water on his shoes. Nobody heard the prophetic word. But God. Speak through that prophet to me. When I got up, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I went to the altar and I kneeled on the altar and started to pray. That begins my ministry. If you are serving, Serve well. Be a good servant. Whenever God has called you to do in this church, do it well. Don't do a lip servicing. Don't do a service. Paul said that even in my absence, you were there. In the absence of the prophet, be there and serve. Make up your mind that you will serve as a faithful servant. That begins my ministry. The same pastor that laid hands on me and prophesied to me. I never thought that one day I, him, and my senior pastor will be on the same bay board. Prophetic impartation service. And I, the usher, the young boy, 
the one that was not called, the least amongst the least, the one that was not eloquent, that couldn't read well, didn't have any background of any education, but one day the impartation of the grace fall upon me. I became amongst of them. It saw also amongst the prophet. How could this be? They will say the spirit of the Lord is upon him. Is somebody hearing me? When you serve well, the impartation of God will fall upon you. pass. My pastor will beg me, please, I want you to come and do a service for me. I say, man of God, I will do. I was not proud to say I've received an anointing. I can see. I can prophesy so that I'm doing this. I'm still serving up to today. My first time I met prophet Issachar, he said, prince, man of God, I want you to do this Come and be a blessing to my church. As a man of God, I'm at your service. I will serve. Since that day up to today, when prophet called me and said, Prophet Prince, I want you to come to South Africa. I say, man of God, what date? When? Whether I'm in my tie schedule, whether I am doing something, I have to sacrifice and come and serve. And I'm serving here not because of anything. I'm serving because God has called me to serve. If not, I won't leave my family, my five children and my wife in this family time of Easter to come and serve you. And serve you. And serve you. Be a good servant. Be a trustworthy servant. Don't be like Gehazia. I look at the story of the prophet Elisha. Do you know who was he? He was older than Elijah, according to scripture. The, the commentary tells us that Elijah and Elisha walked together. He tapped him with his coat. And Elisha left his business. Left his family, kiss his mother and father goodbye and stick to Elijah. The word Elijah means the God of creation. Elisha, the shalom God, the God of peace. They were working together. Though Elisha, who was seven, was older than Elijah, yet he did not say, I am equal. I'm older than him. No. He respect the anointing. The anointing you respect and you honor becomes a blessing to you. The anointing you dishonor will never be a blessing to you. Never rebel against a hand that has laid upon you. You will never prosper. I can give you a witness. All those rebellious sons and daughters that left this ministry Gossiping, saying all kind of stuff. Ask me, where are they? You can't hear their name no more. But when they were here, their name were on Rafa TV. When they were here, they were preaching. When they were here, they were doing mighty things because they were under the covering of the anointing. How good. How pleasant it is when we live together in unity. When we come together to serve together. It is an oil that is poured on the head of the Aaron. Aaron's head is the head, the head pastor. It flows through the beard and pass through his garment to the tail of his garment. So you are the shoulder. You are the neck. You are the stomach. You are the knees. You are the feet. Be under the head. Because the anointing flow from the head to the top. When you disconnect yourself, you have disconnected yourself from the source of the oil. Serve. Be a servant. Don't try to say, I know it all. I can prophesy too. Don't be like Mira. Mira was older than Moses, isn't it? 
But God called Moses and said, my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face. Mira was anointed as a prophetess. But the very day Mira rebelled against Moses, the Lord said, you will be cast out out of the tent. Leprosy from head to the toe. On the, the sister of Moses, who is older than Moses. Don't try to say, I have received a prophetic gift. I can also prophesy. They call me prophetess and this and that. I've been here and that. And because of that, you are rebelling against the oil in this house. I don't come here to make myself proud. He's my senior prophet. He's my big brother. I am his servant. That is why when he called me, I say, here I come, man of God. I have come to serve because I know the impartation I will receive before he departed. You guys don't know how to serve. Elisha asks Elisha. Elijah asks Elisha. What do you want from my God? Stay here. I'm going. He said, no, I will not stay. Where you go, I will go. And they went to Jordan. And the people came and said, do you know that your master is about to be taken to heaven? He said, yes, I know, but I don't want to talk about it. Don't listen to gossipers. Gossipers will always tell you something about the man of God. Gossipers will always try to character assassinate the man of God. He's the servant of God. The oil on him and what he has been through and doing this kind of work. If God is not with you, how can you gather such people? 15 years in South Africa, Shakina Glorious Ministry. If God is not really the God of the altar and the finisher of miracle signs and wonders in this church. And if it is anything, well, do you think that it will survive today? So God's hand is in this. I say God's hand is in this. So the Bible said before the wild wind, Elijah said, what do you want? He said, a double portion of the anointing. He said, you shall receive when you see me going. I came here to tap a double portion. I don't know why you came here. Do you think that I just came as a prophet to prophesy? No. I know there is an unction here. I know there is an anointing upon that great man of God. It is through prophet Issachar that I get a chance to meet the prophet man of God. Senior prophet T.B. Joshua for the first time in Mexico. I bought a ticket. I flew to Mexico just to meet him one on one. And he just looked at me and said, Issachar has talked so many things about you. God bless you. I said, thank you man of God. That's it. That's it. You need a spiritual covering no matter what you are. Humble yourself to tap into the grace. Don't rebel. Elisha received a double portion. When Elisha was about to go, there was no man following him. There was nowhere of Gehazia. Gehazia has backslid, has rebelled. So Elisha died and they put the anointing, everything in the tomb. The anointing was buried. Until the Bible says there was a time that the Bible said that there were men that are going to bury a dead man. And on their way going, they saw the raiding army coming. And they were scared. And they threw the dead body. And the dead body fall on the tomb of Elisha. Immediately, the anointing from the tomb of Elisha 
came upon the dead man and he resurrected and the people saw and said, wow! Did you catch the revelation? The dead bones of Elijah resurrected a dead person back to life. How much more the dead bones of Jesus Christ? It was not bones he resurrected. The Bible says, Jesus did not consider himself equal with God. But he humbled himself to be a servant. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, serve. Neighbor, serve well. And you will be rewarded. Say, wife, serve well. Sister, serve well. Husband, serve your children. Serve your wives. Wives, serve your husband. Serve your children. Children, serve your parents. Serve well. Because there is a parental blessing. That when the father opens his mouth and bless you, bless your marriage, bless your womb, bless your life, it continues forever. If you rebel against a father, if you rebel against a parent, if you rebel against your mother, and your mother out of pain pronounce a curse upon you, my sister, you are doomed. So the servant is not just in the church. It's in every way. I was working with a brother yesterday. And I say, these politicians, what is going on? I say, the former president, I heard he was bound, right? He was bound, right? And I also heard that he was put in prison. He said, yeah. The same man that he handpicked to be his running mate to be his vice and said, when I'm not there, you will be there to rule. The man came and ruled and put him in jail. I say, no. No matter what it is, politicians, philosophies is different. But the hand that feed you, a hand that has been laid upon you, you don't rebel against it. Don't rebel against your mother. There are some of you here, mothers, that you are suffering. Your cause of your suffering is your disobedience and your rebellion attitude against your own mother. That made her curse you. That is why you can't have a husband. Until you repent and say, God, I have sinned. Forgive me. Then the God can restore. Children here, do not rebel against your parents. But serve your parents well. Pastors here. Church workers here. Never try to rebel. If you think you can't stay, don't break the bridge. Let the bridge remain. But choose not to walk on it. So that when you go and you want to come back, the bridge is still there. You can still walk on it. But if you break the bridges and you burn the bridges, you can't come back. And what God is about to do in this church, there are some that will hear of it. The Bible said that the glory of the latter days shall be greater than the former. What God is about to do again in Shakina glorious ministry, those that left ha, and break the bridges, they can't come closer. God is about to bless us. A time is coming. We will fly on the private jets. Prophet will gather ministers. I'm already always on his right side. You have no, don't jealous about me. Hallelujah. And we will be saying, we're going to Trinidad and Tobacco for a program. We need five ushers. And then we will choose you. We need good singers. We will choose you. We need good leaders. Eloquent like Wendy. Be part of it. And we will choose you. And we'll be walking into that private jet. And the people that look down on us and say it cannot be possible, they will say 